Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today's readings talk to us all about God's grace and our cooperation with it and the good effects if we do cooperate with grace or the bad effects if we do not cooperate with God's grace. The first reading, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he says, Grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So we've all received grace, uh, in different graces and to different degrees, all according to Christ's gift. That is, according to what is pleasing to Christ and what is fitting for us. Now, for our part, we need to strive to generously cooperate with that grace. And if we do, then we contribute to the building up of the body of Christ. We live the truth in love with the proper functioning of each part. Now, if we are not striving to cooperate with grace, then we will not contribute to the building up of the body of Christ. We will contribute instead to the breaking down of the body of Christ. We will not be functioning properly according to uh, the place and the time that divine providence has given to us. And we will more or less not be living the truth in love. And this is what we see going on in today's gospel, right? We have non-cooperators. Okay, we're talking about the Galileans. And we're also talking about those 18 people who lived in Jerusalem. Right, first there's these Galileans. And um, somebody says that, well, they were murdered, right? And uh, by Pilate who mingled their blood with the blood of their sacrifices. And so our Lord says in response to that, okay, the people are observing this and they're thinking that, well, since they were punished in that way, then they must be greater sinners than the other Galileans. And our Lord corrects that. He says, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. In other words, they were sinners, but not necessarily greater sinners than the other Galileans. Well, then why were these ones punished in this way and the other ones not? Okay, Because God, in the mystery of his will, is deciding to exercise greater patience with these other Galileans who are just as sinful. Okay? Uh, but he has decided not to punish them. And then the, um, the parable explains this, right? So there is the person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard, and he came in search of fruit but found none, right? So this is the person who is not cooperating with grace and therefore not producing spiritual fruit. And so the gardener, all right, He's, he, who is God, for three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. Right? This is the soul who is not producing fruit. It's been three years. And so, what does he say? Cut it down. In other words, this is something we need to remember, right? That there is no sin that God cannot forgive, right? We're promised that. He will forgive any sin as long as we repent. He has promised us that. He has not promised us tomorrow to repent, right? There is a limit to God's patience. Everyone uh, has their time. So there's the intercession here, right? God determines cut it down, but there's one who intercedes. He says to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. So that may be the intercession of your guardian angel 
who's asking for more time to work on you. That could be the intercession of your patron or protector saint. It could be the intercession of Our Lady who's saying, don't cut it down just yet. Let me give greater lights and insights, greater graces, bring some other people into their lives to hopefully produce a change in this soul. If not, if there is no change after even this year, well, then you can cut it down. You see, if, you, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. God does not wait forever. Neither does Our Lady. Neither do our protector saints. Neither does our guardian angel. And so, the saint we celebrate today, St. Peter of Alcantara, what did we say in the opening prayer? What were his gifts that he received from Christ? He received the gifts of penance and contemplation. Did he cooperate with those gifts? With heroic generosity. That's what the saints have done. They have cooperated in such a marvelous way to the building up of the body of Christ. And so, since we don't have control over other people, we don't need to worry about uh, and look at them and are they doing their, hey, they're not doing their part. You know, they're weak. They're not helping out. No, we need to look at ourselves because we have control over ourselves and we need to ask ourselves, are we co cooperating with grace? Are we functioning properly in our place and in this time that our Lord has given to us? Are we living the truth in love? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,